Now, a new method of removing carbon dioxide from the air and storing it in the sea has been outlined by scientists. The researchers say it captures CO2 from the atmosphere up to three times more efficiently than current methods. Experts believe the widespread use of carbon capture technology will be needed if the world is to avoid dangerous levels of warming. Well, I'm joined now by Ruth Herbert, who is CEO of the Carbon Capture and Storage Association. Thank you for joining us. Um, can you just tell us a bit about this new method and do you, do you think it is really significant? Well, first, let me start by saying that carbon capture uh, technologies have been around for many decades in the chemicals industry, uh, and they typically involve taking um, the carbon dioxide, separating it from the exhaust gases from either a power or industrial plant, and uh, then uh, basically using either a chemical compound or another type of absorber to separate that CO2 and then uh, to transport that and take that away. Uh, and when you combine that with storage, uh, and there are different types of storage, um, then you can remove that CO2 from the atmosphere and um, uh, contribute to uh, preventing climate change. So this carbon capture uh, utilisation and storage, because sometimes the CO2 can also be used, but essentially the permanent storage is key to keeping it out of the atmosphere and avoiding climate change. So it's been around for a while. We've had people doing per permanent geological storage under the seabed in disused oil and gas fields or in saline aquifers. And that's been on, going on for many decades as well. Um, this uh, new solution, again, I think this is uh, one involving carbonation, where the CO2 bonds with uh, other chemicals and forms uh, a carbonate, so uh, a substance that, that locks in that CO2 and keeps it out of the atmosphere. So there are, there are many of these technologies under development uh, at the moment. And the key thing that we're trying to do now is scale those up to commercial scale so that they can actually stop uh, emissions from large sources of emissions like power stations or or industrial plants. And, and how much of a, of a difference will it make if these technologies are scaled up um, in, in terms of you know, fighting the overall global warming climate change battle that everyone's in? Well, the IEA, the International Energy Agency, says that we need to be actually capturing uh, over seven and a half billion tonnes of CO2 using carbon capture um, and storage um, by 2050. Uh, and uh, about a seventh of that, or about a billion tonnes of that, will need to be direct air capture, so similar to this, this project that you've highlighted, where we actually take the CO2 from, from the air in the atmosphere, uh, just because there are some emissions that we just can't capture. We can't capture 100% of emissions. But we're going to need an awful lot of this by 2050. And to put that into some context, maybe uh, bringing back to 2035 and looking at the UK, our own climate change committee has said that we're going to need to capture and store over 50 million tonnes by 2035. Um, if you think about uh, one large power station, say that might be a, a million tonnes. So there's, there's a lot that we need to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're starting from a, from just a few uh, demonstration plants globally and trying to scale this up over the next 10 years. Ruth Herbert, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.